to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to flow in the things of God. As a child, I grew up watching cartoons. It was rather popular in my generation. Bugs Bunny was one of the more popular characters. There was a person called, I believe it was Elmer Fudd. It was typical of cartoons. On the left side of his shoulder, there would be an angel. On the right side would be a little red devil. Sometimes our theology comes to us from silly things like cartoons. That's regrettable, and it can create great problems in our spiritual journey. I know as a child that I would learn what it was to be saved. I understood salvation. I knew from Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if I would confess with my lips and believe in my heart, I would be saved. I knew that. I also knew from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that when we give our hearts to Christ, we become a brand new creation. What does that have to do with cartoons and Bugs Bunny? Well, no one ever told me that those cartoons were silly and they weren't a basis of theology. I knew I was saved and I knew as a child that I had become a brand new creation. But what I didn't know, that there was a battle inside of my heart, in my spirit. I just felt that the devil was on one side and the angel was on the other side and they were constantly pulling for me to do good or bad. It's kind of a Flip Wilson type theology. The devil made me do it. So whenever I made a mistake, whenever I fell, whenever I, I failed to do what God really expected of me, I actually felt I lost my salvation. There are many people that feel that they lose their salvation, that the struggles that they have are, are misunderstood. Paul gives us something I wish somebody would have told me about many, many years ago. I would go 10 years struggling in my spiritual walk with Christ because I didn't know what Paul had written to the church in Galatia. Here it is, chapter 5, verse 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your flesh craves. The flesh wants to do evil, which is opposite from what the Spirit wants. The Spirit gives us the desires that are opposite of what the flesh desires. These two are constantly fighting each other. And that's what I didn't know. You have the flesh and you have the spirit. And in different translations of the Bible, it says the flesh and the spirit in Galatians chapter five are in conflict with one another. Here, it says they're constantly, in the New Living Translation, they are constantly, constantly fighting each other. Well, I misunderstood. I, I, I thought that was the devil and an angel that were fighting inside of me. Well, you know as well as I do that a born-again believer that has Christ within their lives, they can't be demon-possessed. They're saved. And we don't lose our salvation, but we do struggle. We struggle right here with our flesh and with our spirit. Oh, I knew I was saved and I knew I was a new creation, but what I didn't know and no one told me was that this internal conflict and this constant fighting between my flesh and my spirit were going on all the time. Once I discovered that, I realized that 
if I was going to do and become what Christ wanted me to become, I need to make certain I feed the spirit and not the flesh. I need to discover that my enemy was my flesh. It was constantly pulling me away from the things the spirit wanted me to do. And how do you feed the spirit? Daily devotions. You fill your heart with the word of God. You spend time with Jesus. You spend time in the word of God. And then as your roots begin to grow deep, you begin to, pr you begin to produce fruit, spiritual fruit in your life. That's right. Things like joy and kindness and goodness. Some people, they, they take the fruit of the Spirit and they duct tape it into their lives. They add goodness and gentleness and faithfulness. They just add it, but it's really not in the heart. You see, if we allow our flesh to rule our lives, if we feed our flesh, you know what's going to happen? We're going to struggle. We're going to be defeated. We're going to feel like we've lost our salvation. We're not going to feel like a new creation. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God to fill our hearts with prayer, to spend time with Christ, to fill our hearts with the word of God, to be in fellowship. You remember what the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of the brethren. Don't neglect fellowship, being in a small group, corporate worship, being in church. The flesh says, I don't want to study the Bible. I don't want to pray. I don't want to be in fellowship. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do what God, constantly in conflict with the Spirit. Oh, man, I tell you, my life changed. It's never been the same again. I discovered it wasn't a little devil over here and a little angel over here. I discovered that inside my heart, my flesh was fighting my spirit. And then I had to make a daily decision. Every single day, I'm going to get up. I'm going to make my bed. I'm going to open up my Bible. I'm going to fall on my knees. I'm going to cry out to God. I'm going to feed my spirit. Oh, Father God, I thank you for the living word of God. I thank you, Lord, that I can put on the helmet of salvation, the chest plate of righteousness, the belt buckle of truth. I can hold up the sword of the Lord and the shield of faith. I can shod my feet in peace. I thank you, Father God, that your joy floods our hearts as we walk in goodness and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness and, and in peace. I know, Lord, it's going to take patience and self-control today, but these are all fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I know, Lord, that whatever we do, we must do with agape love, unconditional love. Oh, produce the fruit of the Spirit as we feed our spirit each and every day in Jesus' name. Well, you know it. You know that you're saved. You know that you are a new creation in Christ. And now you know there's a battle between your flesh and your spirit. Feed the spirit. Don't feed the flesh.